I help to manage partnerships here at UP. And today I'll be doing a little bit of moderating. Uh, as you all know, we've got Anson Parker, head of product, to talk all things to UP with you. And there's a fair amount of people, up to about 150 or so, which is pretty awesome for a lunchtime session, I reckon. Um, throughout the session, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the Q&A box and we'll have a bit of time at the end to, to kind of try and answer as many as we can. Before I pass over to Anson though, I thought I'd ask a little question just to get a bit of a feel for the room. Um, let's do this. I'm going to launch a poll. Have you ever had a joint account before? Give people a couple of seconds, answer away, see where we're at. Ta -ta. Let's end that. Share the results. All right, about 70% or so hands and we've had it. Um, so they've kind of been living in the old world and explain what we're doing these days. So anyway, over to you, mate. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Ruggers. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I've got a bit of a prezzo to run through. I'm, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get that going. I'll just share my screen. Um, what I really want to do is kind of uh, give a bit of, I think, the background uh, and kind of the making of, like how do we come up with this uh, with two up and this idea of two player banking. Um, and yeah, just provide some sort of context on that journey, what we're trying to do with it. And, uh, you know, talk a bit about, I think where we see it going in the future. Um, but then hopefully just take a ton of questions. Uh, happy to answer any questions you have. We'll try and answer uh, as many as we can. Um, uh, and so, yeah, let's, let's get into it, I guess. Um, I think, you know, in terms of what, what I'm talking about within this Prezo, yeah, a lot of a lot of it, I think, will be kind of you'll see. It's kind of about the vibe, you know. It's the vibe of of what we're trying to achieve, and um, it, it's funny. Like I've talked to customers before, and sometimes when you use that word, they uh, I, I remember talking to a customer and talking about vibe, and they were they were saying like, "What do you even mean? That's that sounds unprofessional." That kind of word, and um, you know, I think what, you, what you'll see with two up and and the way we've reimagined joint accounts is that it's not. You know, we didn't we haven't necessarily dive like deep into you know mainframe banking to to kind of rewire fundamentally how how these things work a lot of what we've done is how is really the way we we combine these it's kind of the, the ingredients uh, are all uh, the ingredients you might have worked with before but the way we I think we combine them together and we position them I think that's really what makes you know two up uh, unique um, and, and, you know, fr from my point of view, I think that that's easy to get lost on people, particularly maybe from the more traditional banking worlds. Uh, there's a this quote I kind of enjoyed from a, one of the CEOs of the big banks, and he was really asked about like neobanks and up, up and away. And he, uh, he said, you know, I'm not dismissing it, but I think there are bigger threats than somebody selling the same old stuff with a nice app, um, which is very dismissive, really. And, um, and I think it kind of misses the point. And hopefully, uh, you know, Two up is a really great example of this. Is that actually the way that we uh, make things accessible and the um, the way that we position them and, and provide you know maybe the the actions and the and the features uh, is often just as important as what those are. Um, and interesting, I saw the same CEO uh, recently ask for another opinion, and he started it with saying, "I'm not a dinosaur, but." And I, there must be something that this, this person does. I think as media people get onto that. I think it's, I'm not a dinosaur, but I hate, I really hate meteors, <laughs> which I think is exactly what a dinosaur would say. Um, so anyway, two up, uh, let's talk about it. Um, you know, this started as uh, joint accounts. You know, that was the feature uh, that uh, was on our tree of up on our roadmap. And that was really the thing that uh, people have been asking for. Like joint accounts has been really from the early days Days. And surprisingly, I think for us, like one of our absolute top most requested features. Um, uh, and so it was something we thought about a lot early, early days and something we started building quite a while ago. And, and I think, I guess, even before that researching, right? And, you know, it was sort of interesting because when we did the research um, and, you, you, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people uh, on this webinar are on the younger side, or certainly our customers are, right? So half, half of the upside is... Uh, um, I think under 25, like 25 or under, and then you know, maybe 80% under 35. So when we kind of look at those, um, you know, use of joint accounts in those age groups, yes, it's quite low. Like really it's something like one in 20 
um, under, under 25 and you look at the whole population actually has a joint account, maybe one in 10 uh, to one in five under 35. So, you know, as the product guy and sort of the, the person responsible for priorities, you know, it, even though this is like a highly requested feature, you're thinking, well, if I build this for our customers, like, you know, very few of them will actually use this. Like, sh- like how, do I, how do I think about the priority of that? Um, or maybe how do I just think about the problem? And, uh, and, and you'll see that's kind of where we've gone on this one. Um, you know, and that was to try and understand like why aren't more people using joint accounts? Um, uh, you know, because when, you know, you know uh, uh, we'll go through some of, I think, the, the reasons, but, I, you know, one I think that stood out immediately was just the perception of joint accounts, right? Like people see them as, um, as this kind of final step in commitment and something where, um, you know, th- this is the general perception. I'm sure there are people listening in that, that don't see them this way, but this sort of general perception is like you go from having your own finances together you know, and then you make this big commitment and you just combine everything and, and now you're just kind of this one financial being, right? And um, like the energy for me is a bit like, uh, you know, the, like the shared email address. It's kind of, if you ever emailed, usually it's like grandparents or something, but like with the shared email address, uh, it's just kind of a weird thing. It's like, who am I talking to? Um, it's sort of this loss of identity. Um, and so there's a general perception of them uh, that we saw, where it's really this idea that the joint account is, is, is a total sort of combining and commingling of finances that you're sort of letting go of uh, independence and privacy at that point. Um, and also they're tricky to untangle, right? Because you've, you've got all this stuff mixed up together, you know, um, and your pay is going in and things like that. Um, and I guess as we looked at each of these, I guess you would say like objections to joint accounts or reasons why you might not use them, we really felt like, do these things really need to be this way? You know, like, like, can there be a role for, for this shared account between two people that isn't all or nothing, you know, that um, when we talk to people about um, their finances uh, that don't have joint accounts, they are managing them together. They're collaborating, but usually it's through just agreements, like through verbal, verbal agreements, right? Not through a bank account. So these kind of sentiments, um, you know, ways of splitting up the share and, and of paying various bills, like a really common in couples, you know, so we've got a ton of couples out there uh, that are not using joint accounts, but are really kind of collaborating and solving problems together. Um, and so even though when we look at who uses joint accounts, it's quite a small number, we think that actually a ton more people could be using them um, if we can address those kind of objections to them, right? And, 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 we can move them away from just kind of this, this world where it's just talking about the stuff and operating their own accounts uh, to a world in which we just support these different kinds of arrangements. So, you know, in our world of, of two upsiders, maybe there's a way that they can come together just a little bit, you know, just to cooperate on some of their finances, um, you know, and, and get a card each and, and, and make payments on some shared bills and expenses. Um, you know, it could be quite a casual, uh, uh, account that's just sorry that's just like a semi-regular c- contribution or there could be the next stage of just a little bit more um, uh, sort of sharing or collaboration where actually you're putting a percentage of your pay or or a regular um, contribution into a shared account they might be managing bigger bills out of it like rent or mortgage uh, payments um, but still there's this element of independence of of you know like keep your keep your personal stuff separate and really that 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 idea of of maintaining some level of your own space you know we we kind of think that that's a really great um thread that can go through all kinds of uh all of these sort of arrangements so even maybe you'd say like the most kind of joint uh of the scale where both incomes are going into two up in this case you know you've got a bunch of shared goals together um that you're saving for you know we think there's still a role um to have that personal spending. And in fact, it's quite a nice way, right? Just to budget discretionary spending is to, is to consider, well, you know, two ups a place where our, our shared um, shared expenses and bills can go, our incomes can go, we can save from there, but we can still have like a weekly amount each that we use, um, you know, for personal expenses, for coffees, clothing, whatever it is. Um, so even if you have come from a world, which sounds like 70% of our, um, our watches when we ran this poll have of possibly, um, uh, doing everything from one account together. And I'm sure there are people that, that don't just do that. Um, you know, uh, you know, we think there's a great, there's still a great role for, uh, for the features of like what we now call like single player up. 
Um, so yeah, with, you know, with Chop, we really try to address those things I've gone over. So, so have support this flexibility so that you can have some, most or all of your finances together. You know, really importantly, I think to that, um, to that point about sort of detangling it, if things don't work out, you know, we want it to be really, really easy to get into, but also shut down. And, you know, it's kind of, uh, interesting and like a lot of our the material we where we talk about what this is we kind of talk about closing it which is not often something that you might expect when you're you know trying to sell a product to someone to say how easy it is to get rid of but we think that's really important right to, to reduce that barrier where you know we don't want that to be a reason not not to do this to think i'm gonna have this life admin hanging over me um, um and yeah and as i said like maintaining privacy and independence we think that's really key here too um, and then more conceptually, we've really approached uh, two up as, you know, it sounds a bit like a marketing slogan or something, but I'll provide some examples in a bit around this is, it's not just a joint transactional account, right? Like there's actually an experience of, you know, two player banking of do it, doing stuff together. That's, that's bigger than just the financial products that you use. Um, so, uh, you know, I think as you've probably picked up on with the branding and naming, like we've really tried to uh, address what we see as kind of a bit of an image problem with joint accounts, you know, um, the, the, the dagginess, the kind of, the Kath and Kelness, we, we wanted to be kind of more Mr. and Mrs. Smith or, you know, just how do we get away from this kind of daggy image or this or this idea of who, who a joint account is for? Um, and that's of course where two player bankings come in um having a lot of fun uh you know it's a lot of fun for us too to, to play with this imagery and really use this as a way to communicate um uh to up um uh but you know th everything i've just explained i guess is uh is great but we don't necessarily have the chance to sit down and explain that to all of our customers um and so you know when you're creating a product that there's absolutely a strong demand for it we have thousands of people that want you know effectively what they would call joint accounts but we see a much bigger market for it, uh, much more uh, people that could use it. Uh, and so we had this interesting kind of challenge of like, how do we really sell this um, uh, to people that don't know they want it yet? Um, and so having that sort of gaming uh, metaphor, you know, for us meant we could build something quite fun and playful to really tell the story um, uh, of, of what we were building and, and why people should care about it and, you know, move away from sort of a more traditional uh, it's kind of bullet points and lists of features into, into this kind of narrative, um, which has been a lot of fun. And I think we've had really great reaction to, um, and as I said, like one of my favorite things and how we talk about this product is that we actually talk about, you know, shutting it down at the end of it. Um, uh, and <laughs> yeah, so that's, um, that's kind of, you know, how we've really approached this and obviously the website too, and, you know, incredible work from the team, uh, producing this, this artwork and these, um, these assets um uh and so yeah uh in terms of what two up is i mean hopefully a lot of people listening to this have already registered but you know we the onboarding is digital of course um it's done through the app uh and and then we have what you'd expect in some ways right like a joint transaction account of course we have all of the awesome you know single player up features there um, like group transactions and all of the merchant identification um but you can see here we're also really clearly showing uh, who's spending what. Um, you know, we have up names and profile picks and we're able to use all of this stuff, right, to, to inform the experience that this is the context that two people are sharing, not just an account with two title signatories or something more banky. Um, shared insights, all this stuff uh, that people be familiar with uh, from the single player experiences there. Um, and, you know, really important that we want people to get up and running with this account basically instantly, like we're in an early access sort of phase, which we'll be out of soon, but delivering a card straight away um, uh, is part of that. In this case, uh, we're going with digital debit cards. I'm sure a question people have is, can I have a plastic card that looks like that? Um, and the answer to that is, yep, you will be able to get one uh, eventually. Um, and it even has its own roadmap, which is an incredible piece of artwork. Um, and as you'll see on this, right, like a lot of what we're doing uh, is just bringing that stuff from from up, you know, for, for like covers and forwards uh, into into the two up world, and just kind of hopefully leveraging those things you understand, but applying them to two up. So you know, being able to like buy, you might have bought some groceries on your on your own up account and realize actually that's a shared expense. I'll just cover that from two up. You know, I think those kind of um, uh, operations would be really great for making. Uh, 
there's the money management stuff more collaborative pay splitting uh is there of course savers is probably going to be i think it's like sort of the most anticipated feature that people are looking out for um and that's starting really soon hopefully we'll get that out reasonably quickly um but that's that's all all stuff you can go check out on the two website um and we'll be updating this as we release um release these features um so i just wanted to go back to uh a, a sort of a comment or a bullet point on what two up is and just talk about that a little bit more, um, which is this idea that two up, uh, you know, what makes two up fundamentally different or, or that different to a joint account. And I think a big part of it, other than those other reasons is this idea of an experience. It's not just a, a transaction account, right? It's this whole collaborative banking experience. You know, I think a great example of that um, is, and, and, you know, it's really a prompt to think about everything in the app. Uh, app and you know how can this change or what are some opportunities where we can make this more collaborative now that you have this player too um, and I think support and chat is a fantastic one and this was a suggestion actually that came out of the support team when we were first talking about this product and it's like of course we, we've got to do this which is the idea of like a two-player chat or a group chat effectively but anytime you're talking to us and um, support uh, creating a new uh, chat you can just add your player to in and right and that can be a um, a chat between between up and both of you. You know, it's not this kind of which account holder am I talking to? All right, well, how are we going to tell the other person about this stuff? Um, and so I think that's a really nice um, example of of thinking about the broader experience and not just kind of the financial products that are going to power this. Um, um, and and you know, I, and just to kind of give a sense of. Where this could go. I mean, the the roadmap I just showed a couple of slides ago. Obviously, we're talking there about the financial features that Up already has and bringing those in. But I think that we we're really interested in thinking more broadly around this the sort of two player collaboration on financial problems. And you know, these are just ideas of the sorts of things we think you know are not out of bounds just because people might see us as a certain type of app. In our view, that we're not going to be limited by that. So you know, when you think about two people that are using a using two up to like share grocery expenses or maybe there's a way we can provide like a shopping list that you could add that you can both add to in the app um and we could tie into our merchant id system so that when we detect you walk into a you know into a coles or woolies or iga we can actually say hey there's three items on your um on your shopping list that you might want to pick up you know be able to 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 take some of the work we're doing on merchants with with this new two-player banking experience and and find ways you know, identify those points where you're actually collaborating on shopping or, or whatever it is. It's, they're not literal sort of online banking use cases, but they're just broader, you know, uh, sort of uh, commerce type use cases. I think that's those, there's some really interesting opportunities there. Um, one thing we've seen a few people asking for is, you know, like it's kind of interesting, you know, with, with notifications that up has real time of, of spending, you can see when your part, you know, what your partner is doing. Of course, you can see that on a bank. And obviously only in the two up account stuff they're doing in their own account is, is private, but there's kind of this fun idea of like, maybe I could react. You know, I'm sure everyone's had that experience. If you've had a joint account of seeing something interesting, your partner's bought and thinking, hang on, what is this? Uh, maybe we can build some, some, some playfulness into that. And in some ways that kind of highlights, I think the, the shared aspect of two up and the private aspect of your own account quite nicely. Um, you know, thinking about opportunities of savers, maybe we can let people, publishes over to a web page and collect money for a wedding or gift or these other sorts of things that might be more common when when you're a couple I think these are you know really interesting problems to think through and and more broadly you know we're just interested in this kind of two-player space um, uh, so yeah early access for this began a, like a week and a half ago May 14 I think I'm sure everyone on the call is well aware of that um, you know we I guess to the to the sort of slides I've been working through we have seen um, we've got seventy percent of people on the call that have had a joint account before. When we look at people signing up for two up, you know, thousands and thousands of people, or actually the majority of uh, two up signups have never had a joint account before. Um, and it's not to say this product is for people that have never had a joint account before. It's we really want to support um, all, all, you know, effectively all use cases. People that want something that's more traditional, uh, as well as people that are have never, you know, have been pushed away by that and want something more flexible. So designed to work well for everybody. But this is really important to see that we're actually, you know, reaching reaching people and convincing them that there's utility here, right? Uh, and this crazy two-player banking idea. Um, uh, and I think, yeah, just to, to close off the two-up stuff, I mean, and this is not something we ever put on our marketing and like 
the, this is kind of the there's this definition of marriage right which is uh, i think this is the australian definition that was changed to something weird and changed back to this um which just says it's the, the union of two people to the exclusion of all others voluntary voluntarily entered into life there is an element of two up where it is an exclusive thing um i would probably make the different the, the definition a little more casual that it's the financial union of uh two people to the exclusion of others voluntarily and ent entered into life or just a little while you know like whatever works for you like uh but but it is kind of this thing you can have one two up with one other person right and i think you know like the sorts of things we've been talking about on this uh uh, uh call it like this probably a you know there's dozens of other use cases when you think what if i could have more than one of these what if i could have it with more more than just one other person you know and like we're absolutely excited to explore that um in the future uh, on the roadmap we kind of can call that slight, something slightly differently we call that shared accounts um but you know we're very uh we're very interested in um getting into that and, and i think you know the vibe of that is maybe uh quite nicely captured in this idea of a fellowship you know a shared account could be something that you might have for a weekend with a with a group of friends where you go away uh, and want to share some you know some expenses uh it could be a a, a share house uh or, or a team or band or something like that um but you know we're very excited into the future uh to explore this and i just thought it'd be worth mentioning because i'm sure that's something that people are going to be asking about you know maybe since we got to indulge ourselves so much with video gaming maybe go, maybe going straight to lord of the rings or fantasy stuff's a little bit too nerdy maybe it has to maybe we'll go more i don't know something else mean girls i don't know what uh some other visual language but um We'll obviously update more on that stuff in the future. Uh, right now, we're yeah very excited about two up two player banking, and yeah, that's pretty much the demo. If there are questions, hopefully there are a few. I'm more than happy to spend as much time as we have uh, going through those. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's um, kind of internally, it's just been incredible to see the journey of, of two up and, and your vision basically just being brought to life in the way it has. Um, spectacular. Loved all the references. Dennis Demuro, one of my particular favorites. Um, a ton of questions. And what I thought I could do is kind of like theme some of them up. Um, so a lot of the questions obviously around timeframes and when things are going to be released. And I just thought I'd like to answer that in a, in a slightly different way. Maybe just from your perspective and, and your experience, like providing timelines in kind of the, the tech space. Why is that? Why is that kind of a difficult and challenging thing? It is tough. I mean, uh... I, I think, uh, you know, software in general, it's, there's, there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lot of complexity. Um, things can take longer than you than you hope or or even estimate uh, in sort of a worst case. But, um, you know, when you add in banking and this regulatory, you know, regulated banking environment, that just gets even more, uh, more tricky to navigate. So, um, yeah, I, I think uh, all of those things together do... Um, do make it harder. Yeah, I think the other, you know, two ups been a really um, challenging feature in a lot of ways because you know, it, what makes up great in a lot of ways is the simplicity of it, and a lot of that's been achieved um, through this through constraint, right? Through limiting what up is, and this idea of a single single spending account um, means that we have this implied sort of inferred context everywhere. We never sort of ask you, you know. Uh, there's no sort of from account drop down effectively and up. It's everything was always in the context of that spending account, you know, uh, spending notifications, upcoming bills, uh, you know, transfers into savers, things like that. Uh, and so that completely changes with two up. You now have, you're now bringing in the second account uh, and it really touches everything in the app uh, and everything in the back end because you now have to consider uh, that there are, you know, two, two possible contexts and you have to communicate that clearly to, uh, to you guys as well. So, um, you know, it does make it easier to, to add then a third and fourth potentially. So it opens, opens up uh, possibilities down the track. So it's sort of a worthy investment in that stage. But I think, yeah, all of those things together have meant, you know, two up is definitely, you know, when we first started it, we thought we'd probably have it live last year. Um, turned out like mid, mid this year. But, um, you know, I think, uh yeah, we're really happy with and proud of what we've done and, and really hope that people enjoy it. Yeah, 100%. I, um, I saw a TikTok recently and it was actually like of a product manager and trying to juggle engineering, design and, and marketing. And it's kind of like, you know, the product manager goes to the team with this cool idea and 
marketing wants it, you know, a month early. Engineers say it's going to take twice as long and the designers say X. I was like, that probably feels like what it's like to be Anson on maybe a day-to-day -day basis, maybe. But then you add in the regulatory layer as well. And it, yeah, that definitely throws things out. Um, sticking with kind of the product management style questions. Um, how do you balance introducing new features with the kind of like simplicity of, of art and, and design? I mean, uh, yeah, that's, that's really hard. Like it's, uh, it is the challenge, right? We, we are, you know, there's a big decent sized team of us working constantly to try and make up better and make it like introduce new capabilities. And that, that, you know, can mean more complexity, uh, but there's more stuff there. Um, so, so having it all together and keeping it simple is a challenge, uh, but it's kind of what we think we do pretty well and what we're very focused on doing. So there's not really a magic bullet for how to do it. I don't think it's just being aware. Um, I think it's, it's thinking about um, a part of it is thinking, um, you know, do we have to introduce something new here or can we sort of leverage something we already have, you know, the, the way to, the way you'll be able to say um, set up your to up account uh, eventually as feature isn't live yet um, to be able to contribute a, a regular amount in each week or have a regular amount go out from it. Yeah, you know, we can leverage what we've already built uh, in savers uh, for you know for auto transfers for for saving for goals. You know, we can leverage that same kind of language and and UI to do that. You know, think that, and it's really fun to think about how features like a cover or a forward or, or a pay split work in this new context because actually it can be that the the feature itself doesn't change it just the, the what you can do with it changes by introducing um you know this this two up account in, in this specific case um but yeah i think it's kind of one of the one of the hardest hardest things to manage uh, particularly over time because you know it's like any software package you've used that that's that's been around for long enough it's probably a really steep learning curve for new uh, for new customers to get into because they've just added so much and, and often because people have asked for so much over time. So you often do see this cyclical kind of phenomenon in software like where people will uh, gravitate to a new product every few years because that product can just start from scratch again and start really simple. But, but managing that complexity over time is absolutely really tricky. I'm just going for the Q&A section and there's some pretty entertaining stuff in there. It's not really a question. I think it's a statement from Russell. Not to discount your individual and collective genius, but why do other bank? Why do all other bank apps like? Um, so that's fine. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> last, last different question um, from Adam. How was the response to up compared to your expectations? Um, and would you have changed your prioritization or done anything differently, knowing what you now know? Um, I, yeah, like it, like this was a really interesting, uh, slightly scary um, feature because there's quite a big hypothesis in there that we can, you know, um, uh, find this new market, almost create this new category, I guess, if you uh, of two-player banking. Um, so, you know, on the one hand, uh, we just wanted people that wanted a joint account to be happy with this and for this to work for them. Um, and so there's sort of an element of like, we really want to make sure we want, we really want to tick that box. Um, but we also want, uh, we hope that we can really convince a whole bunch of people, um, that this is a great, great solution, uh, to a problem that they've never really looked, uh, to a bank to provide before. So, um, I think, you know, like the launch has gone incredibly well. I think we've been blown away by, you know, and, and, and like even the, this branding stuff, like maybe it seems like, yeah, of course, this is just upward do that. But, it, you know, going going out with this quite, you know, it's not something a bank would really, really normally do. And I mean, there's a lot of things we do that are like that. But, you know, this whole two-player banking, you know, we really lent a lot on that. Um, and you never know with these things, right? Like people could, could say, you know, what what the, you know, what are you smoking? Like, what, what's going on here? Um, so in terms of like numbers and uh, and I think importantly, you know, the people's background, like have they had joint accounts before? You know, we're kind of seeing that this is cutting through and, um, you know, we're, we're really excited to um, to see that and and we're sort of redoubling our efforts to make, to get that roadmap, um, you know, uh, you know, as a focus and make sure we're, we're um, you know, bringing out new features to continue to make uh, two up you know, better and better over time. I think it's like, like up itself, you know, when we first launched, there were absolutely key things that the app didn't have, but we got there over time. We communicated what we were working on. Hopefully we got there reasonably quickly and in people's minds. And so it's, it's a similar story for this. We're sort of impatient. We just want to keep, 
keep building these features. But um, uh, I think, you know, for a lot of stuff too, it's great right now, but it's, it, it'll definitely get better over the, you know, over the next couple of months. That's sick. It's kind of like, I guess, a couple of follow-up questions to that. Maybe I'm in front of them, but were there any kind of surprises during the, the, the discovery process um, for two up? Um, and kind of like, what did we do to understand the features and, and kind of needs of the customer? I mean, I think that we were kind of shocked, I guess, I guess like by how high, how high the demand was, but by how like relatively, I guess, low the uptake was when you looked at um, uh, who's using that, who's using joint accounts. I, I think that's partially because, um, uh, you know, like there, there are definitely people that, you know, we, they would love up to do everything that a, that a traditional bank does. And so it's sort of a question of like, once you do more, I can be more committed to up. So I think there's sort of that element to it. Um, so I think, yeah, like that was, uh, I think, uh, um, really, really interesting. Uh, I think just probably surprising how hard it was to get two up. And there's a few different ways we could have gone with it. Um, you know, two up could have been this sort of completely isolated, separate um, experience, almost like when you were logging into up, it's like, are you logging into your own account or are you logging into a, to a like to a joint account with two up account in this case and you know that was sort of tempting because that's quite simple it's really like two different sandboxes of banking but to you know we thought they're just really great benefits and be able to combine these two to like effectively allow that uh, engagement with you know collaborating with someone else to go to sit on a scale and be something very casual at, at one end to something completely all in at the other um, so i think it's sort of worth it but um you know, you're almost like every week, oh, hang on, like we've got to think about the implications of some other piece of this app uh, and what that means for two people to be working together on it. Yeah, it's a nice segue. There's a question here as well, just about what if your player two is kind of like staunchly committed to their, their other, um, their existing bank, like how do, how do you kind of like get them across? But I thought what could be cool, because you talked about it a little bit during the Prezo, um, was us not like limiting the use cases and, and kind of like just seeing where people go um, with that. So I thought I'd launch another poll, um, which basically looks at, um, oh, no, I've got to do another thing. Do, do, do. Um, one second, sorry, here we go. Launch poll. Um, just to get, again, a bit of a feel for the room, like who do you plan your player to be? Yeah, wow. That's super interesting. Yeah, I think like we like, you know, that stuff I kind of put up, I was talking about that marriage stuff. Like we definitely would never go out with any of that marketing, you know, like because I think we are we're generally interested to see how people use this. Uh and you know, it's not uh there are, you know, it is kind of a commitment. Like sharing a bank account with someone else, you are, you know, you need to you want to know that person pretty well and trust them and money that goes into two up is money either of you can spend and there's i think we did a really good job if i if i do say so uh in the app of of trying to trying to help people understand that you know i think that's our responsibility when we're bringing bringing this to a an audience that might not be familiar with it right it's like well what are the implications of this what am i really agreeing to um uh and uh so you'll see us when you go through the establishment or if you remember if you've been through it we'll talk about like you know what does this mean like you need to know and trust this other person, but that other person doesn't necessarily need to be a husband or wife or boy or girlfriend. It could be, it could be that you live with, uh, live with a parent and you have a bunch of shared expenses and, and at that stage in your life, this would be handy or like 4%, not, not too many, but people that live with their, uh, might, might share a house with one other person. This could be a great, um, uh, use for that. So, you know, we're really interested to see how this, how this develops over time and, interesting uses people find for it yeah, for sure. um maybe a couple more questions before we finish up for today um question from adam in the chat who do you take inspiration from uh that's a good question I, like i i really enjoy uh taking inspiration from outside of finance and banking i i think um uh it, it you know like it could be 
it could be a lifestyle brand uh, of you know, activewear. It could be a cosmetic, like an Australian cosmetics company, like go to skincare or, you know, like looking at the way that they'll communicate tone and the fun they'll have with the brand. Um, uh, or, you know, there's, there's clearly a lot of, uh, well, there's at least some video gaming influence, like, and certainly in two up and two player banking, but even the way we, we, uh, presented our roadmap, um, uh, and uh, so I think you know I, I, I think it's really fun to to look outside your own industry and see the ways that people are doing things differently. Uh, like I think yeah, another example I love is like Oatly, the people that make the oat milk. You know, they they took a brand that was uh, like this kind of really serious healthcare, you know, just kind of brown box uh, health food product in the '90s and turned it into something completely kind of. Uh, uh, you know, like not like out, out of the box and did everything differently. And I think, uh, you know, th there's a lot of parallels, I think, to what we're doing in, a, in banking, which has sort of been this traditionally quite buttoned down space where maybe it's not not seen as appropriate to have a sense of humor in it or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, I sort of enjoy that, that outsider uh, position. Yeah, I love that. Um, maybe last question for, for today. I know when I was at when I was at uni, certainly, um, like project management wasn't really a thing or a role. I mean, when I was at uni, I don't think Facebook was around either. So that's a little bit of time ago now. Um, but for people that are kind of studying now uh, or thinking about a potential career in, in product management, do you have kind of any tips for them? Well, I think, yeah, like I, uh, I started in this industry before there was such a thing as product people. So, um, you know, my, my, my journey was, I started more on probably the visual design, like graphic design side um, and uh, sort of picked up technical knowledge, managed to convince a couple of people to hire me for sort of more engineering style roles. So I kind of have been a bit all over the map, I guess. And, um, and I think that does, uh, that actually really helps with, with product to, to have that understanding and kind of empathy for, you know, for designers, for, for engineers, uh, to understand a little bit about what they do, um, the challenges that they have, I think does really help inform uh, you as a product person. And I, yeah, I don't know if, I, I'm, I imagine that these days you might just be able to go directly into sort of product as a, as maybe a course or as a, as a starting point. Um, uh, but for me, I think there's just great value in maybe having a, having a background in, uh, in one of the areas that you might be working with. Um, now, you know, I think the other area that I didn't have that much experience, but it was project management. You know, if you're, if you're someone who's a great, uh, you know, a great marshaller of people, a great sort of, uh, you know, is able to crack the whip when it needs to be cracked and, uh, and, and do the opposite or whatever that is, be nice to people, you know, it's a, probably a key life skill there. But, um, you know, I think that, yeah, people just, people sort of come from all over to do this role. And I think the role itself is still uh, like, uh, there's probably, you know, like I think I'm probably a very different product person to to other people in the industry. You know, some people are very much research focused, uh, uh, and that sort of their discipline is really, um, yeah, incredible brain for for going out there and being very thorough and really understanding the problem through other people's eyes. And you know, and and that's a great discipline, particularly when you're working in an area that you might not be personally familiar with, right? But uh, there are others, and I'm probably more on this side, which are you know, in an area with a lot of sort of lived experience and a lot of understanding. Um, and, you know, for me, I'm really, I get up in the morning to sort of innovate and be creative and find new ways to solve problems um, and almost, you know, be informed by you all, but, but not instructed, you know, literally, right? So coming and saying, I think these three problems are the same problem. I think it's a great solution for all of them. You know, that's kind of my, more my personal, I think, uh, aspect, but, and I think there are a ton of others too, so. Yeah, sort of a, a, I mean, I'd recommend anybody get into this space. I think it's amazing, um, an amazing kind of role. Um, and uh, but I think there are a whole different ways to approach it, both in background and then and then how you solve problems and as you know as a product person. Amazing, such um, such valuable advice. Um, I think we'll kind of wrap it up. I've gone through most of the questions that have been asked. Thanks so much, Anson, for, for your time and, and for kind of sharing all of that insight. Uh, I mean, people on the call and the session today would be so interested on, on your feedback um, on two up and, and all things, um, these sorts of sessions as well. We kind of want to do more of them for the community. So feel free to 
drop us a note and, and let us know what you'd like us to, to talk about or other people in the organization that you think might be cool to, to kind of have a bit of a chat with. Um, otherwise, I might just uh, leave you again with that animation and play it again because, you know, it's real sick. Um, thanks so much, Steve. Thanks, everyone.